Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. Mike Veach to my left. I'm Mark Asano. We hope you enjoyed looking back at the 84 Classic and the tremendous upset from Wild Again and Hall of Famer Pat Day. Our first guest this morning, he trained the uh, dual Classic winner and uh, the finest three-year-old male in America and really did a sensational job with him. And he joins us this morning live via telephone from New York, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rick Dutrow. Rick, Mark, and Mike, welcoming you back to Down the Stretch. Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning, Rick, How Rick. are you? Good to see you again. Well, Good. Rick, I, I wish the interview were under slightly better circumstances. Please tell our audience what exactly happened to Big Brown, which forced his retirement. Well, uh, I couldn't tell you exactly because I didn't see it happen. But, uh, you know, during his workout the other day, uh, he must have grabbed his um, his front foot with one of his back feet and just tore some uh, some meat off in, in a very bad spot for a horse. So it's not like it's a devastating injury, but for the timing of it, it was impossible to uh, put things back together where he could where he could make the race. You know. Well, we're taking a look at a shot from our friend and the very talented photographer Barbara Livingston and you can see what kind of a chunk he ripped off. Rick, <clears throat> when did you notice something was wrong? As soon as he came off the track I, I kind of thought that we were in trouble but I didn't know until I actually lifted up his foot to look at it and as soon as I lifted it up I knew we were dead. Rick, how had he been doing? I mean, you know, we know he's had foot issues in the past. Had you been battling foot problems, or was this a totally unrelated incident? Uh, well, it seems like this was unrelated, uh, even though we have had a lot of trouble uh, trying to keep him training and racing because of his feet. But this was something that had nothing to do with anything that had happened in the past. Mm. But the way that it is, it certainly looks like that this could be possible trouble for him in the future if he was to train and race again. I think that this grab really weakened this area to where maybe he won't be 100% on it again if, uh, if, if, if he was to train and race. So it's kind of a good thing that he just uh, gets over this and doesn't have to worry about this stuff anymore, you know? Rick, let's look back for a moment. He raced seven times for you, winning on six occasions. What was the personal highlight for you? Well, you would think that it would be the Derby. That's what you would think, and that's what I would probably have to say. But um, I don't know. The Preakness was an awful huge race. The way that he just tore away from him, turned for home. I... Uh, the Derby has to be the biggest one, but after that, it was the Preakness because when he wins those two, you know, then you, you, have, you, you start dreaming of winning a triple crown. So it would have to be those two races, without a doubt. Well, Rick, the dream turned into basically a nightmare, as we know. It's been, I think, 19 weeks since the Belmont Stakes. Do you have any better idea now about what happened that day? Uh, only thing I could see is what I initially saw first is just the trip that the horse got from the gate to the half mile pole was just, you know, a horrible, horrible trip. Uh, you know, I know that there wasn't anything wrong with the horse because I was, I was there looking for a problem, but I just never seen a problem with the horse. So, I'm just going to go with the trip for the first half mile. Uh, that's the only thing that I could see. That's the only thing that I could put together. So uh, that's what I'm going to go with. Rick, prior to the career-ending injury, the way Big Brown had been training, what kind of a shot do you think you would have had in the Breeders' Cup Classic? Uh, well, providing they would have gotten there the right way and would have liked that track, uh, I feel that he was the horse to beat in the race. I feel we, naturally, I feel we have the best horse. 
so, you know, I thought that we had a very, very big chance, but he still had to, you know, to go out there and like that track. There's so many different things that you have to have happen the right way, but, you know, it's, it's just unfortunate that he had to do this in the breeze. But we're, we're over it, and we're, you know, we're very excited about watching Kip run. We're going to um, go out there and be behind him 100%, you know? Well, that's a great segue because, unfortunately, no Big Brown, but Rick Dutrow will be represented by a couple of runners in the Breeders' Cup. And for a discussion on them, here's Michael. Well, Rick, good morning. It's good to speak with you again, and uh, we're going to talk about Kip and uh, salute the count. But before I go there, uh, I just want to tell you I really enjoyed Big Brown, and, and, and we, we do know what you battled all the time to keep him together. And so uh, just a heartfelt uh Great job from up here in Schenectady and Albany and Saratoga for the management of a horse with all kinds of talent, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, let's talk about Kip in the Breeders' Cup Mile. Uh, to open, Rick, I've just got to ask you about the Woodbine Mile. It was very uncharacteristic. Well, uh, I, I know it was. <laughs> I, just, uh, I can't imagine telling somebody that I don't think Kip liked the grass course because he's run so good on so many different yeah. kind of grass courses in his career. But that's what I have to go with. The only other thing I could think about is when we sent him up there, we put him on the van with Frost Giant. And Frost Giant is a very, very aggravating horse. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think Kip was too pleased with him on the van with him. I think he kind of got Kip upset a little bit. Maybe that carried over into the race. I really don't know about that. But it had rained all night, mm. you know, the day the Kip was in. And, and I guess the grass course was not to his liking because he went into that race just like you want a horse to go into a race. And he is training lights out right now. I really, really like what's happening with Kip. He's... um He's doing very good, and uh, he's going to be a handful to deal with, I'm sure. Rick, you know, the first memory that I have of Kip DeVille was uh, going back a couple of years. He, he's got a huge lead in the Colonial Turf Cup, and he just seems like and is a very, very eager horse. Have, have you worked to conserve that, that pulling burst of energy, or has, has maturation kind of helped with that score with him? You know what? I can't. I got to tell you, I have not trained his. I've not trained him any different mm -hmm. in any kind of way mm -hmm. to try to get him to settle in his races. I think what absolutely struck a light on with us is when La Peru rode him at Keeneland, okay. and he took him off the pace. I don't know if the jock really took him off the pace, or if Kip decided to yeah. settle in that race himself. But once. We, once we've seen that happen that day, it kind of uh, made us think that, you know, he doesn't need to lead. We don't have to keep sending him. Yeah. Maybe this is what Kip wants. And, you know, naturally we did another stupid thing with him after that race. We took him out to California yeah. and ran him a mile and a quarter, which, you know, the first time that we ran Kip, when he opened up that big lead, he just got beat at the wire to showing up. I think the race was a mile and a quarter, a mile three sixteen. Yep, yep. <laughs> so we were not afraid to try Kip going longer distances. We thought it was well within his reach. Yep. But as we got to know him and, you know, uh, just see what he really wants to do, that's when he became a good horse because it took us a, a while to find out what his game is. And his game is a mile. It doesn't matter if it's one turn or two turns. Maybe he's a little bit better two turns mm -hmm. uh, on a mile. But you don't have to rush him. You can just let Kip place himself in the race. That seems to what he wants to do is place himself where he wants to be. Yeah. And he just works out his own trip from there. I, 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 I really believe that. He breaks so sharp all the time that he just settles himself into a spot. And he makes that one run when it's time to call on him, and he's been very dangerous like that. So, you know, we're just going to kind of try to keep that up and keep it going, and he's got a huge race coming up. Enjoyed that answer very, very much. Rick, uh, we're a week out. What are, what are your <clears throat> pardon me, final plans with him? Is there one more breeze, and when does he go to California? He's going to breeze on Monday. It'll all be basic, basic stuff. I don't like getting a really good breeze in them right before they run. You know, I want to get a basic breeze. Mm -hmm. 
Monday and Tuesday he'll fly out. Rick, uh, is this Kip's final season of racing? I mean, you know, uh, don't know what his plans are. He's got a great accomplishment. As you answer this, we're watching last year's Breeders' Cup turf at Monmouth. You're number eight, fourth on the fence. But tell us, uh, what are the long-term plans here at this point? Uh, if Kip DeVito wins this race, we are definitely going to bring him back to have him try to win three races in a row. You know that? Wow. Uh, <laughs> you know, that would be exciting, and I can see it happening. I mean, this horse is like a picture. He's not been grounded up. He's been, he's been, he's had plenty of time between his races. Last year, you know, I had to, like, keep up with Kip and, keep trying to make little adjustments with, with his knees and his ankles and his hind end. This year, he has been like clockwork. I think last year, after we just walked in two months after the Breeders' Cup, I think that that was the best thing in the world for Kip because he's been treated unbelievable <laughs> since he's come back. He really has. It's been so much fun. This, this is really exciting. <laughs> Rick, let's talk. got a couple questions on Salute the Count in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Um, what encouraged you to enter the race with him? The owners. Uh, the owners did. You know, they okay. claimed him for they claimed him for right. twenty thousand with my brother Tom. And he's just, you know, he seemed like he shows up like nine out of ten times. Yeah. So, um, you know, he got eligible for the race when he went that race in Saratoga, and. Uh, we want to have some fun. The owners want to have some fun, and they got nothing to lose mm -hmm. by sending him out there and having some fun with him. And they're having a ball with him right now. <laughs> He's eight years old, Rick. Do you have to deal with any um, sort of uh, set in the ways habits with an older horse here? <laughs> well, I don't want to get involved with an older horse's habits. I just kind of want to yeah. let them do what they want to. But but his legs are 